Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you heard the alarming comments from the head of the IMF earlier this week. They said AI will affect 40% of all jobs around the world and worsen inequality. Does that worry anyone else in the room? 40% of jobs. It echoes quite a similar report uh, from Goldman Sachs back in 2023. They estimated that AI could replace the equivalent of 300 million full-time jobs. However, they did say there will also be a number of new jobs alongside a boom in productivity. Our next guest speaker today says that AI can be a powerful tool for the procurement department. He says the key is to understand that AI is fueled by people and that we need to appreciate how to identify, utilize, and automate the vendor experience. Dr. Pascal Avertes is the managing director and researcher at Go Beyond Procurement. Now, he has more than two decades of experience in leading a procurement uh, organization. He has a doctorate in project and program management, and he advises more than 60 clients regionally and around the world. Big multinational nationals like Nike, Air France, KLM, and many government organizations as well. And he helps them work out just how to improve procurement and product management success, delivering on time, on budget, and with a very high client satisfaction rate. Please welcome Dr. Pascal to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. First of all, great to be present at this great uh, conference. Um, I want to start immediately because we have limited time. And I want to tell you a little bit more about the best value approach and AI. I want to start with that we have some issues within procurement. And I also want to talk about the solutions we can uh, use to solve these, these issues and using logic and common sense. Besides, I think that the real value lies in identifying, utilizing, and automating expertise also within procurement. And I will conclude this presentation with a Q&A. Let's start. Oops, we have a problem. Did you know that a procurement team is only 1% of the total workforce within any organization? Meaning, the other 99% of the people working in such an organization think that we are only doing cost savings. Secondly, I did a doctorate in project and program management. Around 70% of all projects are not on time, not delivered with a high client satisfaction, and not within the budget after being contracted. That's unbelievable. And we have to change that from a procurement perspective. And I think we can do that by making sure that we get out of our silos and that we look into the future and see if we can uh, create more performance within project management. So I think that the key is to use and to apply logic and common sense. And if you look, for example, many of you do a lot of RFPs, and in those RFPs we have thick documents with a lot of requirements. And actually what we are doing with those minimum requirements, we are saying to our suppliers, this is the minimum quality I want. And I never had a client who said, this is the minimum I want. A client always expects more than just a minimum. But when a vendor receives those minimum requirements, they will say, ah, this is the maximum quality you will get. And immediately we have a mismatch in expectations. So be careful with your minimum requirements because automatically it will become your maximum. Also, when we look at the minimum requirements, we know that in every market we have high performers, we have average performers, and we have low performers. But what we are doing is that if we raise those minimum requirements, we are actually lowering the performance to those, to those minimum requirements. And we also know that if you are doing that, we will increase the risk for our companies. So when I take this bottle, and I would, let, I would release the bottle, would it go up or would it go down? It would go down. Everybody knows that. And it goes down because of the law of gravity. And if I did that yesterday, or if I did that tomorrow, the outcome would be still the same. Meaning that if things are simple, we don't have to make decisions, we don't have to think, we don't have to trust anybody, 
and we don't have to communicate a lot about it. So we have to try and make things simple within procurement. So what can we learn from this? First of all, I think that transparency is much more important than the need for trust and relationships. So within procurement, we should strive for transparency. Secondly, when things are simple, when we create simplicity and when we apply metrics, facts and figures, inc we increase also our transparency. Besides that, if you have to think a lot or if things are complex, your risk will go up. Because when complexity increases, your thinking increases and also your decision making is increasing. Also, we have to be very careful with our minimum requirements because it's a form of micromanaging our suppliers. And we all know what happens when you are being micromanaged. You will become reactive. And the same thing also applies with our vendors. We will make them reactive by telling them what to do. To me, it's more logical to find, no, to find somebody who knows better than myself. Because we are in procurement, we outsource, we find experts, we find people who know better than ourselves. And it also makes sense because if you have an expert, for sure your cost will go down because they make less mistakes, they are uh, more efficient and more productive. And then, of course, we have also very big contracts. But you, when we have to use the contract to enforce performance, then everybody has lost. Somehow, then, we did select the wrong vendors. So how can we now use this expertise, the science of identifying, utilizing, and automating expertise? First of all, in your procurement processes, try to find experts. Try to find supplier experts who know better than yourself. Secondly, have those people tell you what is needed to be successful. Let them create an action plan. Let them create let them do the risk management. Let them validate all the assumptions. Then, of course, once you have found an expert vendor, don't micromanage, don't, don't micromanage an expert. Also very important to minimize communication is to have clear metrics in place. What, how many projects were done on time, on budget? What was the client satisfaction? What was the first time fix? And of course, lastly, Make sure that you create an environment which is simple so that everybody understands. And when you do that, when you create an environment about win-win, then for sure you would need less resources, you will save cost, and you will be much more efficient as an organization. But keep in mind, always act and think win-win. It's about the behavior. Because if you think win-lose, for sure, it will, in the end, always be a lose-lose situation for everybody. So how to apply this best value approach is more or less like an RFP, which you normally would do. However, there's slight deviation in it. So first of all, concentrate on measurable outcomes. Make it simple. Then, of course, you have to educate your team and also the suppliers. Secondly, do the selection as quick as possible. You can use five selection criteria. First of all, identify the level of expertise. Second, do a risk assessment. Third, do a value-added assessment. Have the people who are doing the actual work in the execution phase interviewed, like two key personnel people from the supplier. And of course, you would look at the cost. And when you identify an expert, it would make sense that they have a high score on quality and low cost because they are more efficient, make less mistakes. Important, however, is that you make sure that also during the clarification phase you do some validations. Because sometimes we do a selection and immediately we go to the execution and then we have all kinds of issues during the execution itself. So make sure you do that clarification, collaborate with your supplier and make a plan together so that everybody knows what is going to happen during the execution itself. And then of course, once you move to execution and project, then you have to make sure that you can measure any deviation, meaning, what has changed in the reality compared to the plan you have created. So, to summarize, some best values of practices. Keep it as simple as possible. Select vendors based on expertise, not on cost only. Replace management, direction and control. Don't micromanage, your, micromanage an expert. Also, make sure that the expert vendor is always capable in delivering a lower TCO. 
And you have to identify the risk which is outside of the control of the vendor, because that's your own risk. You have to manage that yourself. Don't rely too much on a trust-based system. We all had experiences trusting people who, could, 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 who could, could not be trusted. So transparency is more important. Avoid thinking in silos and make sure that you always think win-win. So then when you look at what happens in a project when you're applying this approach, this was at Air France KLM. They had to decommission a data center in December 23. It took them only nine weeks to finish this project instead of nine months. And there was a 61% increase in client satisfaction compared to the traditional process they had. But now we have entered in the domain of AI. And AI is automating expertise. It's the first time in history that happens. It is automating our cognitive functions. And you have to understand that AI is a form of automation, meaning it will try and it will um, uh, try to minimize human activity in the process, like automation always does. So AI will do the same. But then you have to understand that everybody learns at a different pace. So if you look at the cir circle of learning and you know that anything around you is information and data, you first have to perceive the information. You have to sense it, smell it, listen, read it. Secondly, you have to process the information. Thirdly, you have to apply the information, and then the actual change will happen. And if you are looking for an expert, you should be looking for people who are capable of identifying a lot of information in a high speed. Those type A people would be your expert vendors to identify. And then now we are in public procurement. And we were, I want to show you an example of an AI we created for the Dutch government, Dutch government organization, which is capable in giving all kinds of advice in procurement. Marhaban. Ana Muhammad Shirai Zakei. Hey. Tama Tatwiri Biwasita Timu Assisi Kau Beyond Procurement Litofir, Wakatka, Walitaklid and Mahotari Fima Sharia Shirai Walataot. Dauna Nulti Nadratan Man. هل تفقد الكثير من الوقت أثناء عملية العطاء؟ لاحظنا أن تحليل المواصفات وخطط العمل والوثائق الأخرى يستغرق الكثير من الوقت والجهد كما يستغرق تلخيص المعلومات مثل استشارة السوق واختيار معايير الاختيار والتقييم الكثير من الوقت أيضا فكرنا أن ذلك يمكن أن يكون أسرع انظر هنا مثالا على كيفية تحليل عملائنا لوثائق العروض في دقيقة واحدة سنريك كيف؟ أولاً، قم برفع وثائقك وفعلها. بعد ذلك، اسأل المساعد الذكي ما تريد معرفته. في هذه الحالة، نريد مقارنة العروض، وتحديداً، الحجج التي يقدمونها لتحقيق أهدافنا. وها هو. لدينا الآن انطباع أولي عن العروض، ونعرف الآن كيف دعم الموردون وجهات نظرهم. من خلال هذه الأداة، يمكن لمشتريات، مدراء المشتريات أو مدراء العقود تشغيل العمليات التكتيكية والتشغيلية تلقائيا هل تحتاج إلى تحليل أو ملخص سريع؟ اسأل محامي شراء هذا يوفر لك متوسطا من 30 إلى 5 سيفر من الوقت لكل مهمة سيكون لديك الوقت للأعمال الأكثر إثارة للاهتمام مثل التحدث مع مورديك الرئيسيين أو أصحاب الميزانيات تعلم في كوبيوند بروكيورمنت كيف يمكنك استخدام التكنولوجيا الذكية عالية الجودة كأداة رأي ثانية آمنة إذا لديك الآن أداة جديدة في صندوق أدواتك وهذا سيوفر لك المزيد من المتعة في العمل والوقت جرب هذا المساعد القانوني الذكي اليوم مجانا وبدون التزام هل أنت مهتم؟ اتصل بنا الآن واكتشف إمكانيات الذكاء الاصطناعي so this is the opportunities we now have. AI will change the procurement profession like never before. This, for example, is an AI in contract management in which you will have an assistant who can analyze, create, um, negotiate, and renew any contract you want. I just want to leave you with two important takeaways. First of all, it takes a lot of courage to make things simple. We live in a complex world but I would urge you to try and make things as simple as possible within procurement. And secondly, when you identify an expert, never tell them what to do. 
Let them tell you what is needed to be successful. Thank you so much. Have a great day.